welcome to another episode of Jim's Love and Garden. Okay, so it's got to that time of year where we can start to store um, seeds and that, and obviously these are the, uh, the sweet peas, as you can see. Now, earlier on in the year, um, you know, sort of pulling these, pulling these off will actually uh, bring on more um, flowers than that, but obviously at this time of year, um, the, uh, the seed pods are starting to go brown, so that's a good sign that you can um, actually take the seed pods off. So all you need to do is basically pull them off the plant and what I suggest you do is put these in a like a seed tray, and then just put them in the greenhouse for a couple of weeks just to uh, just to dry off. Now, what you're looking for is healthy seed pods um, like that. Obviously, this this brown is just them drying out. But can you see if you look at it from top to bottom? Can you see the nice and fat um, seed pods? Those are the ones that have clearly um, germinated, and you've got some nice seeds inside there. So what I'll do is I'll just pick these and I'll show you what they look like um, opened up in the greenhouse. Uh, but obviously if you can dry them on the plant, like these a little bit more dry, um, they're all good. Um, these ones, as you can see, there's not going to be much of a seed inside there because it's quite narrow. But these ones that are fatter, those are the ones that you want to store because those are going to be um, better seeds in there. So I'll, I'll um, just collect some of these and I'll show you in the greenhouse a little bit. Now, as you can see from these calendulas, they've basically dropped the majority of the seeds um, already on the ground, which is basically where I let them to do because um, I always grow them in the same position anyway but uh, these are the actual um, seed pods from the calendula and basically that forms from the back of the so there's a flower and then behind the flower there that's the bit that forms into the seed pod and um, the, the seed pods end up looking like that and then all of these you can just break that up in your hands those are the actual seeds so that bit and I've just dropped all the rest the seeds actually look those are actually seeds there uh, um, so what you need to do is basically save them. Now, if you want, if you do want to grow them in a different position from last year, or you want to grow them from, um, you, you know, from seed in a tray or whatever, if the if they're kind of green like that, then I'll suggest that's a little bit too early because there's still sort of nutrients coming up from the from the stalk into the seed. What you want to do is wait till they've started to go slightly brown, um, so they look kind of like that. Now then ones, can you see, if I do that, um, those are the actual seeds. And what you can do is break them up like that and then put them on a piece of paper in the greenhouse to dry. And then what you can do is um, sort of put them in a, an envelope for next year. But uh, all I'm going to do is just let them drop on the floor um, because the uh, I always keep them in the same position. So there's no reason for me to... Uh, do anything with them other than that because I'll just let them grow where they are to be honest with you but uh, as soon as you've got the, um, the seeds out obviously you know all of these plants can now come out so I'll be uh, I'll be removing these plants very shortly and uh, putting them in the recycling or to burn or whatever um, so that's the uh, the calendula seeds okay so saving any seeds really I find that these these trays are really good and these are the ones that um, basically come from uh, uh, you get mushrooms out of supermarkets in these, and when we uh, buy mushrooms, uh, I always save these little tubs because these are quite good for various things in the garden, really. But but sort of collecting seeds as well. So just to just have a look at the uh, the tomato. All I've done is I've just picked this tomato literally straight off the plant. I've waited for it to go really ripe, so it's a little bit kind of squidgy. So you know, if you're going to eat it, this has perhaps gone slightly too far. And all I've done is I've just put a little bit of um, tissue in the bottom of this tray like that. And now basically what I'm going to do is just use this tray to basically dry the seed. So just by taking a um, carving knife, if you look at the if you look at the tomato, there's always seemingly like a, I don't know if you can see that, there's like a, a light bit there and there. So that means the, the structure inside, there's going to be four sort of lobes and that's going to be the main sort of 
gap between them. So if you just cut just to one side of that, uh, you can see, if you look at the bottom there, you can see where the flower petals used to be. So what I suggest you do is just cut to one side of that. Uh, it helps if you've got a sharper knife to be fair. Just start there off. And if you do that, what you'll find, if you cut in, obviously you've got all of the seeds then exposed on the inside. So if you then sort of squeeze it together between your finger and thumb, what you'll find is you can pull out the structure which holds all of the seeds. And all you need to do then is just go around with a knife um, and just knock knock the seeds off basically onto the tissue paper. And then spread them out as best you can on the tissue paper. So that's the that's the kind of the structure that holds them. And then you'll find on the inside you've got the the other ones that are left. So all you need to do is just basically scoop them out. And the tissue paper kind of acts as a absorbing material just to absorb the, the moisture if you like. Because what you want to do is effectively dry these seeds out. If you look at the rest of the tomato, uh, what you can do is just run the knife round inside like that. Which basically just, just lodges the lodges the seeds. Now you want to try and get out um, the least amount of the kind of the fleshy material as possible. Because uh, that's obviously gonna that's gonna have the, the sort of the juicy part in. Which you don't really want the juice, you just want the hard seed part. And as soon as you've got that side done, then just cut down, cut down the other side. And what you should get on the other side is an identical copy. So there you go again. So what I'm going to do is just take that. That's basically all of the seeds there. So I'll just put that straight in, just spread them out. Now these will dry out quite easily in the uh, the greenhouse at this time of year. And what you can do is just basically leave them on a windowsill um, in the greenhouse or on your, in your kitchen or something like that, so that you know they'll dry out just as well in there. But what you want to do is try and dry them out as quickly as possible. Now, these will these will actually stick to the um, these will actually stick to the the paper, um, the seed. So what you'll need to do is um, you'll have to kind of dislodge them off the paper, uh, which which can be a little bit fiddly to be honest with you, but. Obviously try and get as many of the seeds out as you can. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So that's all of the seeds. So obviously from from one tomato, obviously I started off with just one tomato there. So I'll chuck that outside the birds can have what's left of that. Um, so that's all of the seeds. And if you can see there, there's got to be a good, uh, I don't know, there's got to be 70 or 80 seeds there out of one tomato. Um, so what I suggest you do is always pick a good sized fruit, you know, don't don't sort of go for one of the smallest ones. Always go for a nice sized one because what you want is good healthy, good healthy seeds. Now just spread them out as best you can inside the the new the, the tissue paper. And what that'll do is that'll absorb all of the moisture. And then just leave that to dry. You'll be able to tell when it's dry obviously. Um, leave it in the sun and then obviously the seeds are these little these little sort of brown bits here. Just get that one out so you can see. So there's the actual there's the actual seed at the end there. And now if you leave them for about three or four days, obviously dependent on the weather, if it's a little bit cooler, um, leave it a bit longer. Wait till it's all gone dry. And then what you need to do then is just with the, the point of a knife, just flick out the seeds and put them in a brown envelope. What I do suggest you do is uh, mark up what tomato this is. Now I know that this is a um, alicante. So what I'll do is I'll just put a quick note in there to say that it's an Alicante tomato so I know that the the seeds are Alicante however having said that I've had uh, Moneymaker and Alicante in the same bed so this is possibly a cross of those two but uh, that's basically how to save tomato seeds and it will save you buying seeds next year so well it's not one not I've just found it on the side there so those are the tomato seeds okay so saving uh, runner bean seeds now again I'm going to use one of these trays now I do this on a big scale I, I use a bucket but uh, just to just to show you if you are just going to save a few one of these will do the job now if a if a seed pod rattles I don't know if you can hear can you hear the dry if you sort of rattle them up and down now that's a really good sign that the seeds are ready to come out so all you need to do is basically any pods like this seed um, like uh, beans or peas or anything like that uh, if you just open up you'll be able to expose the seed and then gently with your thumb just release the, the seed out of there 
and then obviously you end up with the, the healthy seed. Any that aren't healthy, um, just discard them because they're not going to do you any good. Um, again, so basically hold the pod like that and then squeeze like that. Don't don't be tempted to put a knife or anything like that because what you don't want to do is puncture the puncture the case of the seed. Uh, you know you want this. You want the case of that seed to be uh, perfectly intact because that's what's going to stop any sort of fungus getting in and damaging the seed before you get to plant it next year. So just with your fingers, gently pull it apart like that, and you'll you'll get out the seeds like that. Now, if your seeds aren't quite that dry, obviously you know there are some others that are like this. But what they need to be is, can you see this is starting to go a little bit brown? That's a good sign, even though it's it's not dry as you can see. Uh, what you can do is just put your between the between the seeds, obviously I'll start at this end, pull the pod apart. Now obviously these these seeds are a little bit fresh, and as you can see, that one um, there's something wrong with this. I don't know quite what's what's going on with there, but part of the pod is missing, so that's no good for us. So we're going to discard that. Uh, the next one is in good order. So there you go. Now what you want to do is most certainly if you've got your seeds out like this, you want to dry them a little bit further. So what I suggest you do is I use some uh, old baking trays um, um, and what I do is I'll, I'll take them out and I'll put them on a baking tray for a couple of weeks in the house uh, just let them dry out inside the house until they're the, the seeds should be hard yeah can you hear that so that if you, if you bang the if you bang the seed on anything it should be hard like that if it's soft then it doesn't give you that tap can you hear the difference between that and that. If it's still soft, you need to harden the shell because it's the shell that's going to protect them. Now, we've got another one here that hasn't quite formed properly, so that's to be discarded as well. Um, as I say, I'm just gently pulling open the pod. Oh, that's in there. Two good seeds, nice good size. Um, obviously, these are the ones that you. That's why I say I always try to keep the big seed pods because you always get the biggest seeds. And it's the big seeds that are going to form the strongest plants for next year. So, uh, as you can see, the difference between the size of that seed and that seed, um, as you can see, those are the ones that you want to keep. Those those are going to form a good, healthy plant. But the bigger ones, obviously, these will shrink slightly as they dry. But the bigger ones are going to form the, uh, the the better plant for you next year, the stronger plant. So, that's how to save um, runner beans. Uh, and I save um, probably about three or four hundred seeds every year. Uh, but any that are kind of like this, um, you know, that have got bits missing or, or there's, there's a bit of mould or anything like that on them, just discard them. Um, leave them out and uh, let the birds or the, the mice take them. Um, but uh, that's um, how to save the runner beans for next year. Okay, so saving sweet peas. So what I've done is I've pulled off some of the, the sweet peas here so I can show you what... Uh, now, as I say, you know, as I showed you in the previous clip, what you want to look for is a pod that's reasonably fat. Now, as you can see, that's if you look at it sort of at length on like that, um, that's that's kind of nice and fat. If you've got a thinner one like that, the seeds are likely to be less successful. So there's the, the actual pod, and just like the beans, I've got a little tray here uh, that I've been saving. Um, in fact, that's one these these trays I've had this for a few years now. Obviously you just keep using them now. Again, just like the bean, you want to press the, like there's the lengthways, what you want to do is press the pod together and you'll hear it crack. And then if you open it up, you'll then expose all of the, all of the sweet pea seeds in there. As you can see, they're nice, plump um, sweet pea seeds. So if you just pop them into there. Now, um, what you should see on the, on the seed, Obviously, that's just the bit that was attaching it to the. Uh, that was the bit that was attaching it to the thing. Now, um, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll show you. Peas and beans are pretty much the same thing, but what you'll get is down one side of the, one side of the the pea. I don't know if you can actually see that. I'm just focusing. There's like a little, like a little slit going down. Now that's where the water will enter into the um, the bean seed or the pea seed next year. So if I just show you on a bean seed. It's that part there. So that's all of this part of the seed is is all um, sort of hard, if you like, and the um, this little sort of shape that you get there. Now that's the bit 
where the water is going to enter to reactivate the seed. So when you always plant them, you always plant them in the ground like that. And what you find is the water will then go into here, activate the seed, and then in here what you'll have is a structure uh, which will basically form the root. So the root will go from that hole down, and then the bean will then split open round this edge here. And then the two leaves will come out. So if I just show you this one here, um, if I can actually break this open or not. So actually inside the bean, if you obviously if you're saving the beans, don't do what I'm doing now because you'll destroy the bean. But uh, these, that's actually the hard covering that I'm just peeling off, and that's the bit that protects the bean during the winter. So if I can just show you, so as you can see the bean there, this is the this is the bit that's inside. Um, so basically that's just like a stripped down version of that, so I've taken the outer cover off. Now inside the bean is you've got, you've got this little part here, now that, that bit there is actually the root for next year, and then these two, these two pieces on the side here, um, they, them two will form into the, um, the, the first two leaves on the plant, so if I just separate it now, they would have formed the first two leaves. Um, and then that little bit in the middle there, that's the root. So basically what will happen is, when you put the bean seed in the ground like that, that little bit there will come out and then grow down as the root, and then these two will open up and then form the leaves for next year. So that's why you always, you always stick the bean down that way to let the water in there to activate this bit to basically form the first two leaves and the, the root will then form from that part there. So that's what the bean... Now, sweet peas are exactly the same but smaller. So in there what you've got is effectively the, the, uh, the, first, two, the first two leaves, if you like, are already in there. Uh, that's obviously these bits but smaller. Um, and the, and the, the starting of the root. So that's where this, this little bit here, that's that little um, groove there, that's where the water will enter the seed and the root will come out and then the two leaves will form up from there. So obviously that's the bit you need to protect. So when you're looking at your seeds, what you want is that to be completely intact. Now if I open up a slightly narrower seed pod, um, say this one for example, now this is, this is not such a good seed pod, and these are the ones that you want to um, perhaps avoid. Now if you look at those, you can see how those seeds are, obviously that's the, that's the type of seed that you want, nice plump round, little black balls and can you see those are quite shriveled and uh, not too good those aren't really going to grow into a plant next year what you want is for seeds to look when you take it out they should be nice plump and round like this one here and obviously put them straight into your seed tray like that so when you what I would suggest you do is pick off all of the all of these and obviously open them up take a look at the seed now the seed could be slightly smaller um, those are a little bit smaller, but to be honest with you, most of those should be okay. If you've got any kind of fungus forming, can you see at the end there? Discard those. Um, if you've got little little shriveled up things like that, they're going to do you no good, so dispose of those. Um, let's open up another one. This is slightly greener, this one, so this isn't perhaps quite as well formed. Just open that up. Now, those seeds are green. Um, if you can see, I'll, I'll, I'll get them out so you can see them. So those seeds are green, they are turning black, but can you see that they're nice and round um, and formed correctly, so they, they will most certainly grow next year. As they dry, as these little green ones dry, they will turn black and they'll look like that eventually. So that's just because the pod hadn't fully dried out, but you're okay to take them out of the seed pod. Um, let's just have a quick look in here, see what we've got in here. So again, there are some that aren't quite... Um, as well dried but you are, you're okay to take them out of the pod. Now if you're unsure what you can do is just take all the pods off the uh, the stalks like that and then put these pods into a, a big paper bag and hang the paper bag up in the shed um, somewhere dry and warm and, and, and obviously not damp and these will naturally open and, and release the seeds anyway as they would do in the wild but what you can do obviously is, is like I'm doing here is just help them open um, like that um, and you can obviously see that the seeds are inside and there's no reason why you can't sort of get the seeds out now 
and uh, so as you can see very quickly um, you know you can sort of shell these um, and again you know there's a row of nice rounded uh, dried black seeds that's what you're looking for you're looking for little round balls if there's any that are sort of shriveled and sort of more sort of square shaped um, they're the ones to avoid and if I was you I'd discard them okay so a few more notes on the seed obviously the, the sunflowers have now dried I've had these in the uh, the greenhouse for a couple of weeks now as you can see these are the black seeds and they will you know if you just just rub your thumb along like that you'll be able to pull the seed out so there's a the seed don't don't be tempted to um, take off the the harder outer shell um, if you're storing the seeds to grow next year just leave them on and uh, put them in your put them in your little tray or whatever and these ones obviously this one's been drawn a little bit longer so you can see these just come straight out now as soon as you've got them dried what I would suggest you do is um, take them out of the the casing of the flower and um, store them and I know a few of you have asked me to send you some of these and I'll almost certainly uh, send some of these over to you so that's the sunflower now if you want to eat the sunflower seeds which you you know which you can what you need to do is break off the the outer outer casing of this so this like this black bit here if you break that off on the inside will be the like the inside part of the seed and that's the bit that you can eat um, but you need to break off this outer sort of hard bit to, um, to get at the inner bit but uh, anyway that's the sunflowers obviously you know that's the way to save your seed and that's what I do every year obviously I've been doing that for quite a few years now um, um, so that's basically the sunflowers now moving on to sort of gourds and um, um, pumpkins and wherever else here, here are a few that have already come out out of the ground um, and basically what you need to do with these is if you cut them in half what you'll find is inside will be all of the seeds now it, it, it can get sort of quite stringy and messy on the inside but what I suggest you do is when you cut these open if you wait until sort of uh, bonf um, not bonfire night, Halloween and uh, you're going to carve these out what I suggest you do is cut the top off and then what you scoop out from the inside which is basically the seed and pulp around the seed um, what you can do is basically put that into a colander and then wash the seeds and then basically the seeds are kind of flat round um, sort of seeds um, again just like the um, I showed you with the uh, the tomato seeds put them on a little bit of tissue so I've got these over here drying now in exactly the same way put your pumpkin seeds on a piece of tissue like that obviously a bit bigger scale than that and then just dry the seeds out on a piece of tissue and then um, store them in a, as I say a dry um, reasonably warm place and then they'll be good to um, put in to the ground for next year. The one thing that I will say is, is in the past, I don't know if you've seen some of my early videos, I have had some strange crosses between, the because I grow quite a few different gourds and pumpkins and um, courgettes and other things on the allotment. And because these plants are all related to each other, they will actually cross, um, cross fertilise each other. Uh, sorry, cross pollinate each other, sorry. And you will get sort of crosses between them so you need to be careful if you've uh, if you've had these plants close together like I have and what most people do um, the next year's seed you could potentially get obviously if I take some seed out of this one this one's been next to this plant what I could get next year is some some hybrid between this pumpkin and this pumpkin so uh, just be mindful you can get some weird and wonderful uh, cross bread um, okay so just to show you um, another extreme these are um, Nicandra and these are the flower seeds that I sowed last year now these are sort of minute little seeds um, I've actually got some in here just to show you I don't know if you can see them on my finger but they are literally like little teeny brown um, things now if you what you get is these little lanterns on the on the plant which basically forms from the flower and if you remember these have got like a bluey purpley type flower now if you pull back the um, it looks a little bit like a cape gooseberry if you've ever grown them before but inside what you'll see is uh, this little seed pod in there now if you, if you shake it I don't know if you can hear that it's like a little maraca that's a really good sign that um, that you've got some seeds in there now you won't need to do much all you've got to do is just break open that seed pod like that so I'm just going to sort of break it onto my hand so you can see now all of the seeds will just basically just fall out of there and you'll end up with out of each flower you'll end up with I don't know a couple of couple of hundred seeds to be honest with you and if you can see all of those there's absolutely masses of seeds in there so all you need to do is basically store them now they won't need a lot of drying if you brought them in from outside in the wet 
um, obviously dry them out before you do what I do so what I've just shown you so obviously as they go I've, I've had these in the greenhouse so um, you know these will most certainly uh, these are most certainly dry but if you imagine wait till they're dry like that and, and if you if you shake them you know that they're dry so all you've got to do then is peel back this bit will just do what I do just do that and all the seeds will basically just fall straight out on there and as I say if you do want to save you know if if, if somebody's given you some of these to grow for next year um, you're only going to need one or two of these and you're going to end up with hundreds of seeds and uh, these are as I showed earlier in the year these are really good germinators you know if you save your own seed off these you can pretty much guarantee every one of them is going to turn out Okay, so it's at this time of year where it's um, basically it's time to bring all the fruit in and um, you know things like apples and uh, plums and damsons and all that kind of thing. Um, it's all um, you know basically you need to bring them in now and a, a lot of it you can store obviously plums and damsons and stuff like that uh, you need to be making something with. You can either freeze them, you can freeze damsons. Uh, I'm not sure about plums, so I've never frozen plums but it's the time where you make a lot of preserves and stuff like that out of these um, you know sort of types of um, fruit. And, uh, and apples as well. You can store apples if you store them separately. So you pick all of the apples. Obviously, you don't want any fruits that have been damaged in any way, shape, or form. They need to be sort of perfectly, uh, you know, sort of no um, insects have been at them, and uh, you know they've not been bruised or any windfalls or anything like that. Um, and then you can sort of store them as long as they're not touching each other. Uh, you know, you can store them. And what I suggest you do is you put some newspaper in a in a tray, and then store your apples sort of separately. And as long as they don't get frozen you know, in the in the garage or whatever, then they should store for, you know, you know quite a few months in that way. Um, and I suggest you keep them in the dark as well. Um, but uh, obviously a lot of apples, what you can do is you can chop them up and freeze them. Um, just basically don't, you know, you don't need to do anything other than just cut them up and then put them in a bag and freeze them that way. Um, and obviously, but as soon as you have sort of cut them, obviously you need to do something with them. Um, apples will go off quite quickly, um, so any windfalls or anything like that, what I suggest you do is chop them up and freeze them if you've got room in your freezer. Otherwise you need to store them in your shed, you know, sort of pour them out on trays. And okay, it's now the season to be picking uh, damsons, and damsons are one of those fruits that I think are quite underrated because they can be a bit of a, a, bit of a sort of time-consuming job to pick them, um, but uh, they do make absolutely fantastic uh, jam and other things like that. And as you can see, basically a damson is just a small... Um, it's basically a small plum, it's in the same um, um, group of um, trees as plums and stuff like that really. But they're, uh, they are really nice and they do have a reputation for being a little bit bitter. Um, now there are other things like damsons, you've got obviously sloes which you find in hedgerows um, around the British Isles and they're used for um, also making jams and stuff like that. But as you can see, you know, you can pick a handful of them and what I tend to do is uh, leave them a little bit um, longer on the tree. And what I what I tend to do is basically feel the feel the, the the damsons, and as soon as they start to feel slightly soft, then that's the time to um, to sort of pick them. Now, if you pick them a little bit early, when they're hard, that's when they can be um, a little bit um, bitter. Um, and difficult to, um, you know, you obviously need to put a lot of sugar with them and stuff when you're making jams and that, but uh, they are a really nice fruit. As you can see, the tree is absolutely laden this year. Um, but uh, the other one tip I would like to say is when you're picking damsons, don't climb the tree. Damson trees, along with plum trees and that, are not suitable to support any kind of weight. And don't lean the, try not to lean the, um, the ladder against the tree because it just won't take the weight. So basically what you need is like an A-frame type ladder. Um, so there's no stress on the, uh, the actual tree itself. And uh, you should be okay, but as you can see, uh, you know, you can very quickly pick um, a nice bag of damsons. Okay, so when you're making your jam and stuff from your, um, your fruit, you know, you can make jam from pretty much any fruit, you know, everything from your sort of, you know, your gooseberries, um, just berries, raspberries, strawberries, you know, but, um, some fruits um, contain um, this substance called pectin, and pectin's um, required to basically to make the jam set. Now, certain fruits don't have a lot of um, pectin in them. Now, um, fruits like um, damsons, um, plums, and things like that, fruits that have a um, like a seed in the middle, like a you know like a um, 
like a kernel or whatever in the middle. Um, they typically have uh, pectin in, and apples have a lot of pectin in. So if you're making like apple jam and stuff like that, you don't need to worry about it too much because the substances that you need in there to basically to make the um, um, the, the jam set um, are already contained within the fruit. However, if you're making, for example, strawberry um, jam, strawberries don't have the uh, the pectin in there. Um, Damsons do have some, but they don't have a lot in there. So typically, what you need to do is augment it with or, or put in um, some more pectin to make the uh, the jam set. Now, this is always a tricky, tricky thing when you're making jam. Basically, what you need to do is boil the fruit up with the um, with the uh, the sugar, and um, and then basically what you do is you um, keep bring it up to a sort of rolling boil, and then you let it go down and simmer. And you need to simmer it. Until you get the chemical reaction between the uh, the pectin and the sugars and stuff like that, till it starts to set. And basically, what you need to do is get a cold plate. Um, just put a plate in the freezer or in the, um, in, you know, in the fridge for a few hours. And then what you need to do is drop a little bit of the mixture out of the saucepan onto there. And then if you push it with your little finger, what you should find is the is the jam will actually wrinkle. As soon as it starts to wrinkle, that tells you that it's starting to set. And then you can then jar it up and you know, sort of whatever else. Um, but uh, what you can use, and what I wanted to uh, just say, is there is this substance called Serto. Now it's not available in many shops. I do find this is um, most certainly the Co-op and Tesco do this, um, and other cook, um, cooking type shops will do it as well. But Serto has been on the market probably since the war, or if not before, and it is ideal. And it's a it's a mixture of all sorts of things in there. But most, uh, you know, the one thing that it has got in there is um, pectin, so if you look at the ingredients it's got pectin extract, I don't know if you can see that on the ingredients and that's the stuff that makes the makes the uh, the jam um, go um, you know sort of to set so it actually turns out as a as a, as a, um, a jam or if in America like a jelly um, now without the the pectin in there what you'll end up with is more of a puree um, of, the, of the fruit so it won't set and go hard um, you know as it should do, but uh, there's 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 a lot of different sources of um, Serta. Now my mother makes a lot of um, jams, um, and she made some damson jam um, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, what she actually does is she doesn't use Serta. What she actually does is when she makes the damson jam, she will actually put an apple in there as well. Now apples rich in uh, in um, pectin, so she's using that to make the um, uh, the uh, you know you know the jam set. If you're not so experienced with with Serto, uh, it, it, it's it's a known quantity, um, and so if you you know if you're boiling up a load of fruit, which is obviously taking your time to grow, pick, prepare, and wash, and all the rest of it, and then do it, the last thing you want is for the jam not to set properly. So this is a um, you know a more sure way of um, uh, you know getting your jam to work. It's not expensive. Um, I can't remember the exact price. It's about a pound or so for a bottle like that, and that will do you know a reasonable batch of um, of um, jam. So this comes highly recommended, and I use it all the time. It, there's as I say, there's not only pectin in there. There's other um, things in there like um, you got things like um, um, acidity regulator and stuff like that um, in there. So that, you know this is this is really good. Um, you, you know for making preserves and stuff. And you can make a whole, a whole raft of things with this. Uh, you know, you can make marmalade, jams, and all the rest of it. And if you go, if you just search for Serto, uh, there is a website. I don't know if the details are on here anywhere, but there is. Um, I've been on the internet before, and it, all you need to do is search for Serto, C-E-R-T-O, and what you'll find is loads of recipes um, on the on the internet that this company uh, put on there, and. Um, you know they'll explain how to do all sorts of um, um, you know jams and all you know preserves and all the rest of it, and it's a really good way of you know if your freezer's full and you can't um, you, you know sort of you know preserve any more of your stuff rather than it go to waste, you can preserve it into jam jars and stuff like that, and uh, you know to use it to later date. So um, you know and obviously you can store them at room temperature. You know you don't need to. Uh, um, you know, sort of refri you know, refrigerator or anything like that. The other things you can do with uh, some of the jams is you can do what's called freezer jams, and you use Serto for that as well. And what you do is you uh, you make like a puree and then you freeze it, and then uh, what you can do is freeze it in small containers. Um, and then when you're, um, I don't know, if you're making like a um, a pudding or or something like that, what you can do is basically take it out of the freezer, 
thaw it out and then you can use that as like a syrup to put on your uh, I don't know you, you know you can make an ice cream sundae or you can make a tart or you know all, you know all these different things um, so that's another way of prever uh, preserving fruit as well and uh, a lot of these a lot of these um, recipes and that were developed during um, you know the first and second uh, world war and uh, the women's institute of um, of have played a large part in this and you know and there's a lot of recipes and and all these sorts of things to sort of make the best of what you got in the garden basically waste nothing was the you know was the, was kind of the the motto so no fruit would go to waste you know it would all be it would all be put into a preserve or, or you know or something and they've left us this this really good legacy of um of um you know you know preserving fruit and vegetables and stuff like this you know to you know to last you through the winter and there is some quite unusual um uh, um um things that you can make as well and and all of these things you'll never buy them in the shop because you know they basically just don't exist you know you know out in the uh, the wider world you know from you know from buying it you basically got to make these and there's all sorts of recipes like uh you can get like nettle and mint jam and you know and all these things where they you know they used to go out and get nettles and sort of chop them all up and um, mix that with I don't know mint or whatever you know that's just one that's just come to mind um, and uh, different uh, you know using herbs and um, different um, flavorings that you can get from various different plants and you mix them with the fruit or, or with something else and you can make all these weird and wonderful um, things which you'd, which you'd never you know sort of buy in the shop and you can use these to you know when you're cooking if you you know if you're cooking with lamb or, or, or pork and stuff like this you know these are things that you can try and if you aren't you cooking and most people who, who own an allotment you know you, you know are into the cooking or all the you know the partners are into cooking as well and uh, you know a lot of these recipes still exist out there and uh, there are some weird and wonderful recipes that you can make and it's well worth looking into it because you you know you you'll be exposing yourself to stuff that you wouldn't normally see you know you don't see it in restaurants or in um you know supermarkets and that and i think it's um i think it's nice that these things have been um you know sort of written down and recorded for us to use and it'd be a shame for us not to use them so do have a look on um, the, the, you know there's quite a few websites out there that um, explain how to do various different um, things and most certainly look on the uh, the Certo website because they've got quite a few recipes on there and uh, and I and I typically use their website quite a lot to you know to pick up new tips and stuff whilst making um, different preserves and that and uh, you know things like chutneys and, and and stuff like that you can make as well you know there's a whole load of stuff like that that you can you know you can that you can make to make with sandwiches or, or salads or whatever else so uh, do have a look and um, you know have a go because you you know there are some really nice things that you can mix together and uh, you, you know make yourself some interesting things to eat during the winter months so i hope this episode of jim's love and garden has been of some use to you please don't hesitate to put any comments or questions you've got below and i'll always get back to you and i'll see you on the next episode of jim's love and garden